Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Subhub Podcast. I'm MK Sullivan. And I'm Danny Moreno. And today we are getting into it with Sears and Al. Uh, such, I mean, the biggest sub ultra race in the world, I think is what it is often called. Um, but yeah, we're going to cover all the things, the course, the athletes, some predictions, some speculations. I don't know if those words are synonyms. <laughs> Um, and then just have a chance for MK and I to catch up because as you all have known, if you've been following along, we've taken a little break, have been heads down, working hard into our training. But before we get started, we do want to um, bring a lot of attention to our giveaway with Poseidon Bike, which launches today. Uh, if you haven't seen on Instagram already, the giveaway dates, it starts today, August 7th and goes all the way until August 23rd, where the winners will be selected and announced on our OCC preview episodes, as well as on Instagram. And our friends over at Poseidon are offering up not one, but two bikes, and you get your choice of whatever bike you want that is currently available on the website. Yes, we're very excited about this. Definitely our biggest giveaway so far. Definitely our biggest. Honestly, two for two. Like, our giveaways are good. Like, yeah. if you aren't already following us on Instagram, you might uh, as well. We got hella giveaways. <laughs> and we still have a lot of other fun stuff to give away in the funnel, in the plan. Uh, so definitely follow at the sub hub on Instagram if you don't already. Uh, a couple of notes just to say a little bit more is to enter, you must like the post. Follow both the Subhub Pod and Poseidon Bike on Instagram and tag a friend, uh, tag a friend, <laughs> tag, tag a friend, a friend. And tag a friend uh, in the comments to be entered. And uh, the bike will be shipped to you free of charge. And it's uh, valid for all of those in the 48 continental states. So we are really sorry um, if you're not in the 48 continental states, but uh, nevertheless, a huge giveaway. How are you liking your bike so far? I haven't gotten it yet. It just was ordered. It should be on its way soon. So uh, I'll maybe let you guys know before the end of the contest. I have a feeling it'll be here before I leave for France. So yeah, definitely. It's uh, a, I mean, personally, yeah, I love my uh, gravel bike. Right now I have the drop bar Redwood uh, in matte green. It is super fun around Mammoth because I can ride to and from the grocery store to and from the gym maybe on some gravel and dirt and you could definitely take it on like semi-technical trails if you're like really good probably even more technical trails <laughs> it doesn't have suspension um but yeah it is a great bike easy to switch the gears and such i just call it like my workhorse bike um and yeah so if you're looking for some cross training maybe you don't run every day um but you're just a fan of the running uh check out our friends over at poseidon they're based in socal and uh, they manufacture everything in house or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really excited because uh, I'm gonna hopefully bike quite a bit. I always I'm so bad at like getting on the bike, but I'm hoping to bike quite a bit after CCC because I'm trying to turn around really quickly and like run a marathon. And there's no way I'm gonna do that if I try to run after CCC. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I feel like so many people bike nowadays and I've heard from so many trout runners and mountain runners. It just really translates incredibly well for climbing, but most, mostly that like active recovery in case you don't want to put as much load because yeah, running up and down mountains versus like maybe on the roads or the track, like your body gets really <laughs> yeah. fatigued uh, quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I just want to confirm that they are a consumer direct business so that means they bypass extra distribution channels and they manufacture their bikes in their own factory that's why the prices are incredible so yeah yes. check out that giveaway follow us on instagram follow poseidon bikes on instagram and we'll uh catch you guys back up on that in a couple of weeks <laughs> exactly so sears and all we'll get to it first off it's been like three weeks it feels like since we recorded a <laughs> podcast basically since uh u.s champs concluded that was our last uh go around 
And I feel like first we got to talk about the Olympics, man. If we're recording this on August 6th and like, I am deep in this track and field right now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Today was the 1500 men's final, the women's 200 meter final and the women's steeplechase final, along with a couple of other field events. But that men's 1500, how did was, you feel watching just the whole thing start to finish? Like literally was screaming at the TV. I started on like sitting on the couch because I was like so just like stoked, but also like nervous. And I thought, ta- okay, so Tommy and I made a bet before the race even started like three days ago. We were like, if the Americans sweep the podium, the moment it is over, we are going outside and we are doing a beer mile. <laughs> and there was there were many moments in that first 800 where I was like, oh my God, I'm about to have to go do a beer mile at like 1 p.m. on a Tuesday before Danny and I even record. <laughs> um, but that race was insane. Like I had a feeling Cole Hawker was in gold medal like shape, but to like see it actually happen and watch him hug that rail the entire way around like he always does. And he, I thought he was going to go around them at some point and try to like get them from the outside, but he did not run further than 1500 meters. Holy cow. (laughs) What about you? (laughs) Well, I mean, like, was it obscene to believe Americans could sweep the podium? Because I also like in the back of my head, I'm like, could they pull this off? I mean, three American men uh, in the final already just felt like a huge accomplishment but like for it to be those three guys you're like can they do this I mean I had faith in Hawker I had faith in Nagus and I'm like how much international experience does Hobbs have but Hobbs just carries himself like an old man even though he's like by far the youngest <laughs> like 20 guy, right I think <laughs> yeah yeah he just runs like he's been running for a decade um but yeah I mean the when they went out I think it was like in 50 50- no how fast did they go out i think they went out in uh 52 and then okay and then they ran 151 i could be getting that first split right but yeah they went out in 800 and 151 yeah when they were going out and i was like holy moly are they gonna break the world record having to like win this and you know Jakob going out from the front that was a little at first intimidating because he runs his best times like that like kind of time trial-y but as it was going on I just kept looking at his face and I'm like I think he's starting to like lose it a little bit um and then Kerr also just looked master class he looked good he looked like he was covering everything but yeah I was watching with two of my friends who I competed at UC Santa Barbara with because I'm staying with them right now and we were off the couch screaming losing our minds river my dog is like going crazy because we're all losing our minds and like that one little small trip up with hawker like coming into the last hundred you're like oh no oh no and for him to still respond and pull it off oh my gosh it was just and then the goose at the end you're like did he get the silver did he get the bronze i was just chanting you (laughs) oh my gosh yeah tommy was screeching at the tv and i put the dogs on the front porch because i knew that they they hate it when we scream at the tv like that and they were immediately at the door like like just barking at us like thinking that somebody was coming to murder us because we're just screaming bloody murder at the tv oh but we didn't sweep the podium but we did go one three and five which is crazy it's so crazy i mean I, you know, I really want all these three dudes to stay healthy for like through the next two to four years, like through the next world championships and the next Olympics because they're all so young. They're all so young. And yeah, I mean, props to Hawker because he had, I think, recently like a down year or two where he wasn't quite in form uh, due to injury. Uh, So nobody ever talks about him. Like it's always like, yeah, I mean, even Nagus got before, the American record. Like, I was like, oh, so Nagus would be the one to win yeah. gold. When I was like, which American's going to win? I was like, oh, it's going to be Nagus. Yeah. yeah. No. With that kick? Damn. No way. And Hobbs Kessler still has the 800. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, so oh, good. Yeah. I mean, I thought the 10K with Grant Fisher got me going. This yeah. my heart rate shot up. Two Losing. great races. And then, my favorite part to wrap this up, like they go to uh, Hawker's parents and they're like super happy and 
of course they're they're i think it's his parents or some family and i told my friends i was like why are they lighting the stadium on fire this is insane <laughs> <laughs> i would be like flipping over like chairs <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> Just to note one last thing, we because we, yeah, we yeah. this is a trail podcast, you guys. <laughs> um, so obviously Matt Centrowitz won gold in 2016, and he ran 23 seconds slower than Cole Hawker just ran to win gold. Like two completely different races. That was a tactical race. Matt Centrowitz was a great tactician. Cole Hawker also a great tactician, but still did it in a fast race. He ran. 327 <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh too good well i think too with the um yeah i have it right here the men wasn't it that the top seven men or something oh man it's killing did they me. all run under 330 yeah i think probably end up being which is so fast this is killing me anyways it's something like that you all can look it up but wild race yeah i wasn't sure if we were going to medal again well i have a lot of confidence in the women's 1500 um yeah. and then once these guys all got in but like initially starting off with grant i'm like that's our medal that's, it. that's pretty damn good medal like <laughs> a distance medal that is yeah we've so. got tons of potential in the sprints this year yeah oh yeah yeah distance medal that's distance medals and um yeah. what's it called but yeah, American men showing up. I mean, three medals already between the five and the 10K. Or sorry, yeah. 15 and the 10K. So cool. And we're, we're just getting started. Just getting started. <laughs> no, um, I freaking love track and field. This is like such an exciting time of the year. Yeah, I, I honestly lost it with Gabby Thomas's 200 yeah. meter win. She just like came in. As soon as she started that race, she was on one and she just, blasted out of the blocks well she was she had julian to the front of her which is such a big advantage for her because she knew exactly where she needed to be coming off that curve and i love julian alfred but man it's good to see gabby thomas win yeah no 100 oh. percent. within 60 minutes we got two golds and two bronzes and two events <laughs> yeah yeah oh my gosh oh great job us go you say <laughs> all that training really paying off um <laughs> I was trying to think. No, I think I think that's about it. I mean, Grant Fisher in the 10K um, was a big highlight for me too, just because like the 1500, it was insanely fast. I think Nico Young was 12th and had also broken 27 minutes. Yeah. And like 13th place also broke 27 minutes, which was kind of absurd. Um, and then obviously like the sprints, Noah Lyles, that men's 100. If if you haven't well, seen the photo yet- ever go see the photo of that 100 meter finish because it is literally fingernails as far as how yeah. close these guys all are and then honestly the women's 100 like seeing uh saint lucia lucia get their first medal that was like really emotional even though you know uh shikari ended up getting second yeah julian alfred is such a beast She's i a love beast. watching I mean, her second in the 202 what a ball yeah. man Oh, so cool. And then what race are you uh, to kind of wrap this up? Because we can make a whole podcast episode oh just God, about the Olympics. <laughs> uh, what races are you looking forward to next? I'm super excited for the women's 1500, but I also think that the race I'm probably most excited for, and I actually can't decide, is either the men's 110 hurdles or the men's 400, because I think in both of those events, we're going to get at least two medals. That's really exciting. Yeah, the men's 110 hurdles is super stacked. We may well. sweep that. <laughs> oh, that'd be so sick. Um, what about you? What's your, what is your highlight for the next? Because we're, I don't even know that we're halfway through it yet. I know. Um, I am also excited for those events, especially the women's 1500. Um, I'm excited just to see how fast our women's four by one, knowing that Gabby Thomas is uh running that third leg on that curve and her curve today was just like ugh, disgusting. insane it was disgusting um so are we on world record watch i'm not too sure um and then oh women's form 100 meter hurdles i just like yeah. really think fem Cavol is gonna show up like I, yeah i know that like we shouldn't be cheering against 
the U.S., but no, it would be like, really cool to see Femke win. Yeah, like Iron sh- Sharpens Iron. Like Sydney first had like a rivalry with Dalila Muhammad, and then look where she springboarded off of that. So like, it's like I think our girl Sydney's gonna pull off on top, but she's not gonna run like she's not gonna win like she has the past couple of years. Like no. she would actually fight, which I would love that so much. So good. Them because way closer to her now than she was even last year so yeah. i mean she's looking as smooth as sh- sydney is in the heats it's yeah. wild and they're just oh. like on a different level it's so dumb if it's you really so- want to know we li- we're li- we could list every single uh, yeah. event. we're excited for all of the events that are coming up <laughs> yeah oh my gosh oh i can't not announce it but um ryan uh ryan, ryan Crow- Crowser. <sighs> legend three, three gold, gold medals, medals. <laughs> so cool even and Valor Elman, two gold medals. We are, we're just, we're <laughs> knocking it out of the park. <laughs> if you're in another country listening to this, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's always really cool to see um, American track and field for sure. And swimming. We knock it out of the park and swimming and gymnastics. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> all, um, right, all right, all right, all right. Wait, kind of sad. The part that I was a little let down by um, was the Italian girl who ended up getting fourth Mm. in the 5K. Like, I think Faith deserved that medal for sure. Um, But it was really cool to see her sticking her nose in it. I thought that would have been a really cool medal for Italy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Okay, one last thing before Sears and Al. How are you doing? I'm good. Training-wise, yeah. Yeah, I... uh... I'm training a lot right now as we, you know, all are, but I'm just, I'm running more than I ever have and more vert than I ever have by far. Um, and so I'm either like feeling like absolute shit or I am feeling like I am the shit and there is no in between right now. I think that sums it up perfectly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, um, eating a lot of food, running a lot of miles, trying to sleep as much as I can, using my recovery boots because I never roll out. <laughs> um, and that's that's where we're at right now. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You're at least you. all the boots. That's a big move. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how are you? I am very similar. Yeah. I either feel like shit or I feel like I am the shit and just I'm going to destroy. Um, but yeah, just like respecting the field but also try not to think of the field much to be honest yes. just like focusing on preparing the best I can and then what I got Improving. is what I got yeah yeah and it is nice that our course is the same as two years ago um I am excited for that because I love that ridge like I think it's such a fun part of the course and yeah I think the part that has taken me most of back in training is I'm also I w- I'm not running the most miles that I have, but I'm running the most time on feet I ever have because like vert and combo being at altitude. But yeah. I keep like, I'll like be about to go for a run and say I'm just like really don't want to run. And then I think to myself, there's no way I can do another run today. And then you start and your body is producing energy. And I'm like, yeah, I can, I can run. Yeah. <laughs> I think I told Rick at one point, I was like, I felt better on my third long run of the week than I did on my first. And that is, I used the F word. <laughs> I said, that's so F, dude. What the hell? He's like, you're a real ultra runner now. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is cool when the body starts adapting. I feel yeah. that it has adapted to the mileage and my brain just still can't be like, okay another 15 miles another 15 miles okay this is just okay. normal now yeah <laughs> i know but i yeah. like i think on strava you know you used to label like long run workout and like yeah. all that stuff it's like i don't even label long runs anymore because like what is a long run when all of yeah. your runs are like over 20 miles <laughs> it's totally skewed for sure <laughs> <laughs> i love it oh. Uh, well, in case you didn't know, MK's running CCC. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we ever said that on the podcast. I don't think we did, but I did yeah, post it on Instagram, Instagram last Instagram. week. And I am lining up for OCC. And we are doing two OCC preview episodes. Uh, MK will be 
joined by Tony McCann on the women's preview. And then we will have no other than Hayden Hawks on the men's OCC preview. So after this episode, wait, you know, a week and a half, and then you will get graced with even more Subhub content. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You'll have three episodes this month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so exciting. <laughs> um. All right. Shall we get to it? The yeah. race of the weekend. So there's a little race going on this weekend called Sierra Zanel, which just many consider just a little guy. Uh, many consider to be the most competitive sub ultra in the world. And the reason, at least from my opinion, maybe MK, you can agree to disagree, um, that this is is because of the depth and the terrain uh, kind of um enables the race to be run a little bit closer because it is more of a like trail running race than like a mountain race where someone needs you know like a more technical skill set which is really cool because it's a great gateway race for folks who don't necessarily have to have a ton of trail running experience and the reason is because it starts with a very steep climb so you know regardless if some parts have some roots you're going uphill and then when you get to the top it's fairly like ch chill in regards to technicality and lots of fire roads and stuff and then even the downhill isn't technical um so anyways so historically yeah year after year this becomes the most uh competitive race because the times end up being super super close and you could have someone that's never run a trail race win the race yeah no this this race is like the convergence of like a road runner and a trail runner or a mountain runner can come together and have like pretty equal days because a mountain runner might be better at the beginning part, which is mostly climbing, but then somebody who's got a 59 minute half marathon, for example, will just absolutely eat up that second half. Um, but Danny's totally right. I think when I, you know, previewed the course a couple of years ago, I told Danny and Bailey Kowalczyk beforehand, I was like, there's literally like 30 seconds worth of technical terrain on this course. There was like one scree field that we went over, if you can even call it that. I don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I think I was like, I'm just going to walk this. Cause like, if it's just this portion of the whole race, like I'm not going to roll my ankle here to just be able to run the rest of the time. Cause I think other than the, the second mile, when we first went onto the trail, that was a little bit narrow, but it was still double track. Everything else is like three or four people wide. Until yeah. you get to the downhill. Yeah, there is a lot of space to pass people. And what is also interesting about the race is that you can see people most like probably 90% of the time. You could see the people in front of you. And similar to a road race, it feels like maybe they're just there. But, you know, it's like an awkward amount of distance, maybe 100 meters. And everyone is running just as fast. Um, so yeah, it is a very unique and super special race in the trail running community. Uh, it is located in, uh, the Swiss Alps and you start in a town called Sierre and end in a town called Zanel, hence the name Sierre Zanel. And similar to how maybe like Mont Blanc Marathon, it has a lot of French, uh, pride around it. If a French person wins it, probably more similar to Zagama. Like if a Spanish or Basque person wins Zagama, then, you know, everyone is going to flip a chair over, light the stadium on fire sort of vibe. <laughs> um, uh, Sierra Zanel is the same. Like if a Swiss person wins Sierra Zanel, it is a huge nationalistic pride that comes with that. And it's been, I don't know when the last person was, but, um, oh, maybe Maud, duh, Maud is yeah. Swiss. Yeah. So with Mod Mathis being a multi time win multi time winner, it's a big deal. But yeah. you want to dive into the actual stats of the course? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so this race is oh my eyes twitching. This race is 19 miles long, seven thousand feet of gain. It tops out with an elevation of about seventy eight hundred feet. Um Although the course does gain 7,000 feet, you gain almost 5,000 of those feet in the first six miles. So it's not um, a mountain race in the typical sense where you're going up and down and up and down. You are going straight up for six miles, and then you kind of roll to the high point at 7,800 um, feet, which I think the high point comes around mile uh 14 
and then you descend down into Zanol. So almost 5,000 feet again in the first six miles, and then approximately 2,000 more feet again in the next eight, and then a five and a half mile, very cruisy, very runnable descent. Yeah. And more times than not, it is really hot. Like when you're on top of this trail, like once you, so most of the climb is in the trees and you kind of hit a couple of asphalt roads in some between houses and stuff. But once you come out the top of the climb, the whole race is pretty much exposed until you start going downhill again. So that is a huge factor to consider when you're looking at uh, the course and This Saturday already, Sierra, where the race starts, which it's always warmer there, and it's an afternoon start, um, has a high of 92. So it is another warm one on the books right now. And then in Zanel, because you are finishing a little bit higher, it's a high of 74. But by that time, if you're racing, like the damage of heat is kind of already done since the majority of the race you're racing in the heat. There is... Interestingly enough, there are some thunderstorms currently listed for Sunday, and like any mountain range, the Swiss Alps is not immune to weather shifting a day here or there. Um, has Sears and Al been raced in a thunderstorm of recent years? I really don't think so. Um, I can't even think of think one that, to memory. I think that the year that Ninke ran it, it wasn't actively raining, but it was muddy like it had been raining. Interesting. I feel like I remember it being like a moody day or like kind of muddy for some reason. Interesting. I Yeah. I Well, maybe the day before because the photos I remember of her, she's just like caked in salt. But, you know, yeah. if it does rain even before Saturday, say, uh, which a lot of times it does rain, it just makes the humidity so much worse because it just adds moisture to the heat that's are inevitable. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember – Um, cause we even got support like with our bottles and stuff being taken to the top, uh, when Danny and I ran it and I remembered getting my bottles and they were, I was hot. I was so hot and my bottles were also hot because they had been like out there for a while. And I was like, Oh my God, the idea of eating this sounds like an actual nightmare. Like I might vomit if this touches my tongue. (laughs) It is. It's a warm one. If you take the gondola up on the other side of the valley, uh, there's like this little restaurant up top. You can see almost the entire course on the other ridge because it's so exposed. It's as soon as you're done with that climb, you're out of the trees for the rest of the race. Yeah. Yeah. It's a (laughs) donezo. There were there were many sponges out there the year that you were in it. (laughs) Um, as far as, uh, a couple things that we want to cover, there is strict anti-doping measures. Um, and we saw this come into play two years ago when the, uh, both the winners or was it one winner? I think it ended up being both from one year. Yeah. Um, we need to double check on that, but I think it might've been both the male and the female winner. Unfortunately, both had already had violations and then ended up running. Um, However, now – this part is really confusing to me. Now they're testing, like WADA testing for all participants. Like probably meaning the top athletes. Top 10 or something. Top 10 or something like that. Um, At least that's what it says online. I wasn't there last year, so we'd have to confirm with some athletes, but – yeah, we it was in the case. same year. Okay. So we hope that's the case, um, that it is mandatory testing for all of the uh, like top 10, et cetera, athletes. Um, and they do some doping testing before and after the race to comply with World Anti-Doping Code. So Yeah. There we yeah, go. Yeah, so in 2022, Mark Kangogo from Kenya and Esther Chisang uh one Sears and all they were both later popped um mark in October Esther was not popped until January of the following year but she was the one that had a very recent doping like sanction on her when she entered the race um which was a big deal because it felt very shady on a lot of people's parts yeah yeah definitely 
So, um, so yeah, it's it's really cool that you know, again, the most competitive salt ultra in the world should have very robust uh, WADA testing or doping control. Um, so yeah, that's good to see. As far as this race goes, before we dive into the start list, what type of athlete prevails at Sears now, in your opinion? You know, in the past, you know? I probably would have said somebody who has like just pure speed, like somebody who's really good at a half marathon or something like that. And granted, I'm sure Sophia Lockley would run a really fast half marathon if she ran one, but she's not like a track runner. She's not a flat, fast gal, you know, historically, but she's a very good climber. So you either have to be a really good climber or you have to be really fast on flat, I think. And if you're just kind of okay at both of those, I don't know that you're coming out of the top 10, really. Yeah. Yeah. Like it definitely lends if you are super exceptional at one of them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I I think that's probably because if you're good at fast flat, that translates pretty well to climbing speed, as we know, based on like an Anna Gibson or a Mika, Mikael Boudin Rousseau, you know, Christian Allen, like those kids are really fast on the track and they barely had to train for the mountains to go kick everybody's butt in a VK. Yeah. And then you have Killian and Maud Mathis, both multi winners. Um, and Killian is an insane climber. Like, I would say he's more of, I know he's fast too, but like yeah. he's more of a mountain runner than like said fast runner and he's gone up against for almost a decade at this point let's see his first one was in 2009 so uh, he's been running it for 15 years but he's run it not won it nine times yeah and maybe he didn't race every year too but the span but during that time he 110 percent has raced against incredible road athletes who like came in thinking that I'm going to win this race. And it's like, no, Killian ends up coming up on top. And then um, Lucy Wambui uh, McGeary, she has won it three times. She was an early member of the team Run Together, which in our last newsletter of the Subhub headlines, you can see an interview with the team manager. And I think she historically came from road running and then she came over. So yeah, like MK said, I think if you're, really exceptional at either one of those skills and can do the other one quite well um you're bound to come up on top for sure yeah no it'll be and this race just keeps getting deeper and deeper every year I don't know how because it's always been deep but like it just it keeps getting better and this year per usual it's a part of the golden trail world series um it is also a part of the world mountain running cup which it pretty much always is and you have it written down that it's part of the Golden Trail National Series. Is that for like Swiss, Switzerland and France? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, cool. Well, um, before we get into these start lists, which are super fire and insane, here's a message from one of our partners. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Never Second. Although they are a relatively new brand in the space. Never Second has been working with some of the biggest names in trail running over the last couple of years, like UTMB champs Katie Scheid and Jim Wamsley. Never Second makes fueling easy with their modular system that allows you to create the exact carbohydrate formula for your activity. Their products are meant to be mixed and matched so that you can have 30, 60, 90, or even 120 grams of carbs per hour. I used Never Second in my recent second place finish at the Canyons 100K, where I also snagged a golden ticket. Despite being pretty nervous and nauseous at the start of the race, I was able to get down all of my nutrition because of the easy consistency and light flavors of Never Second products. I drank 90 grams of carbs over 90 minute increments and supplemented with one C30 an hour. I alternated between the C90 mix and a three scoop C30 mix to get a little bit more sodium every bottle. I also alternated my gels with a C30 plus that included caffeine so that I wouldn't get too tired as the race went on. I never experienced flavor fatigue or an upset stomach for the entirety of the 100K. If you want to try Never Second, just head to neversecond.com. 
That's N-E-V-E-R, the number two, dot com. And use code SUBHUB25 for a 25% discount on all your orders. All right, this women's race, let's start with them because I have no idea <laughs> who's going to win this damn thing. I know. Danny and I have like really strong opinions about the men's race. And on the women's side, we're like, it could literally be like eight people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's start off with our returning champion, Sophia Lockley. Sophia won this race last year, I think kind of in a bit of a surprise for many people. Like, she definitely was one of the favorites coming in, but to win this race and to win it as an American is a pretty big deal. Um, she's had kind of a rough start to the year. She had a really good ski season, uh, won her very first World Cup race, tried to come back to race uh, the Japan Golden Trail World Series event, was unable to race there. Um, and the first race that she's competed at was fourth at Mont Blanc Marathon recently, which I think was a bit of a shock to some people because last year she won it pretty handily. Um, and then she recently was first at um, the Iger 50K, which was her first 50K, I'm assuming to try to qualify for OCC next year. Yeah. And what was interesting last year, too, she did come off of that strong win at Marathon du Mont Blanc. And then pulled off the double win at Sears now, which is really hard to do considering their different skill sets. But and yeah. she was second at uh, Dolmuth, like not that long before that. Oh, that's true. Behind, Youth. Uh, yep, yep, Mont Blanc, Dolmites, and then Sears now. Yeah, she was on Bender. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting to see how she lines up. Um, I mean, we could get into predictions afterwards. I think she's showing up ready to go. Like, she wants the win. Uh, she's a competitor. I mean, she's an Olympian. She's Team USA for skiing and everything. Um, so I would imagine, like, leaving Mont Blanc Marathon, she got a little foam in her mouth and, like, is ready to come back um, to to try and win this race. So, yeah, American Pride and Joy, Sophia Lockley lining up. Uh, next up, we have Joyce Muthani Nagiru. Um, she is the recent winner of Broken Arrow VK and 23K. She did win at Four Sisters against Maud Mathis, Grayson Murphy, Sarah Alonzo. The list yeah, goes on. Yeah. Very, very strong win there. Um, and she's won other WMRA races and has had other podiums since then. Has she gone to the well too many times this year is the only question mark there, but I would say Joyce is coming in as a very strong favorite, if not on the same level as Sophia, despite um, having gotten second to her. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally messed that up. That's all right. She got second to her last year. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have uh, Phileris Kasing, who we interviewed last year in the lead up to Sears and all. She ended up third last year at her debut. Or Sorry. Third last year, second in 2022. She knows how to run this course. She hasn't had, like, she's she's been podium at, at several WMRA races this year so far. She hasn't raced any of the other Golden Trail races, so we don't really know how she matches up against a lot of these women. But she knows the course. She's probably going to do pretty well here, would be my guess. Yeah, I would guess so, too. And she's done a couple more WMRA races this year, like you said. Yeah. Um, Next up, we have Meow Yao. She had fourth last year in her Sierra Zanel debut. Meow has wheels. Like, I think her PR in the marathon is 229. It's like right under 230. Yeah. Um, and she is a ferocious racer. So I don't know why her fourth was slightly surprising to me last year. Uh, but it just proved to me she can literally do anything. So I, th yeah, she's I think it's just because she'd been like, gone for so many years like she did get second at Mont Blanc Marathon last year and that was kind of like her first big race back I think since her big win at CCC like three years prior to that um so I think we were like oh second at Mont Blanc Marathon she's probably a mountain runner kind of same thing with Sophia right like I don't know that anybody expected Sophia to take that win so handily and both of them translated Mont Blanc Marathon over to Sears at all Sears and all very well yeah, that's so true. Yeah, because it was, she did Sagama and then Mont Blanc and then Sears and all. 
Yeah, and then finished up yeah. with her to OCC. Nice. Um, another returner from last year, Alice Gaggi. She was fifth place last year. Brooks Brooks trail runners last year were just sweeping up on both the men's and women's side, and Alice was part of this. Um, since then, she was also ninth at the Golden Trail World Series final, and recently first at the Labrador Twenty K. Nice. Uh, then we have kind of finishing up this last part of who we think are tried and true, you know, like on this course already. Uh, we have Madalena, Madalena Floria, uh, also a Solomon athlete. She went out hard last year. Um, she still ended up finishing in the top 10 and she's just proven herself to be an incredible climber and she's really fast. And she recently got second at Mont Blanc marathon, which again, it's like, it was her debut. Wasn't sure how that was going to go. And before that, she was third at the uphill European champs and also third in the up down, both of which were incredibly close races. Um, so she's definitely in good form right now. And then to round this out, uh, no other than Judith Wider, the Hoka Red Bull runner. Uh, MK and I had a discussion the other day whether or not she's GOAT status. I think she's at GOAT status so far, considering her wins and podiums at various races. Um, but she was second in 2019 when Maud set the course record. She was 10th in 2021, but she was coming off of um, her stroke and some other stuff going on in her life. But her win at Mont Blanc recently against Floria, Sophia, Miao Yao, Judas. Judith is here this year. She's ready yeah. to go. I mean, she's ready all the time, but I thought that was like heck of a win. And she was recently second place at European Up Down as well. So like she's shown that like her short speed is still there, you know, even though she's been getting ready for this OCC 50K too. But um, no, it'll be good. Unfortunately, Maud Mathis has dropped out of the race due to an injury. Otherwise, I think that would have been another big name for this field. Um, Scout Adkin, recently second uphill at Women's European Championships, fourth in the up-down. Um, she is pretty dominant on the WMRA scene, and it seems like she's starting to kind of move out of that a little bit. Still doing plenty of WMRA, but to see her performances at European Championships, I think she's very much ready to do well at this race. And then some other names that you guys know, may know, may not know. We've got Anna Gibson, Therese LaBeouf, Sarah McCormack, um, Oria Liasi, Bailey Kowalczyk from the United States, Nayada Iragorn, Ali Ostrander is signed up for this race again. I really hope to see her out there this time. And Caitlin Fielder, a classic, always top 10 at these Golden Trail World Series races, but this is her first time at Sears and All, right? Yeah, this is her first year's now, and she has podiums at Mont Blanc, Zagama, and OCC. So, you know, it'd be really cool to see her do well in kind of like this last upper echelon of races that she is yet to compete in. Um, yeah. But yeah. And then one more special shout out Danny Arevich is okay. running Sierras and all. So, if you guys have not listened to our episode with Danny, go check that out. I think that was back in June. Um, and she will be also debuting at Sears and all this year. She's been like running around France, doing all sorts of Paris coverage for the Olympics and getting ready for Paralympics as well. So I'm excited to see how this goes for her. Cause I imagine she's probably a little tired. <laughs> She'd probably be a little tired. Yeah. If not physically, at least emotionally mm -hmm. good work on in there. Um, but yeah, before we dive into kind of more of our speculations and predictions, uh let's go over the men's race Elite. yeah yeah you think so and then we do both of them okay yeah let's do it we as women and because it just is like are very excited about this women's race this time around though there's just a little little bit more for the men's race it is just like oh it's crazy similar to the women's race multiple people can win um and this may be lack of beta from the women's side. Maybe there's some heavy hitters that we are missing, but we got some beta for some men who people may not be paying attention to or even know of. Um, shout out Remy Laurel for... Yeah, shout out Remy Laurel. We really appreciate it. We already knew it. that, yeah, <laughs> Run Together was like the team to watch out for, but it's even deeper than we thought. 
Yeah, it's even deeper. But uh, we shall start with no other than the literal mountain goat, uh, <laughs> Killian Journey. <laughs> yes. Uh, the dude has won, won the race nine times. The last time was in 2021. And the last time that he raced, he placed fourth. I thought he placed fifth. Um, I think he was... Oh yeah, he may have been fourth and then like got out. Remember he got out sprinted because he was celebrating? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. And then last year I think he did actually oh, he plan to run it. He okay, so he was fourth. I think he did plan to run last year, but last year he had that weird injury and ended up dropping out of like the whole second half of the season. Yes, that is right. After Iger. Um, so that was unfortunate. And he's also the course record holder. And we looked back and he's been running this race since 2009, like we mentioned. So huge shout out to Killian. Next up, we have Philemon Mbogo Kiriago, a uh, member of Run Together. He was last year's winner. Uh, incredible race and debut at Sears. Now, he himself even said he wasn't sure if he could beat his teammate Patrick, um, but it ended up being Philemon's day. He's had some like really good races since then, but not quite like the same exact tier as Sears and all, which, you know, when you win Sears now, it is hard to, you know, have that performance every single time. Uh, but he will be on the line. Yes. And then Patrick Kipniano, who is the Golden Trail World Series king right now. <laughs> Um, he was second place last year at this race to his teammate Philemon, but just barely. It was like within a minute or something like that. Um, he so far has won Kobe and uh, Four Sisters China, did not compete at Mont Blanc Marathon, but coming back for Sears and all. Uh, he didn't compete at Mont Blanc Marathon because he was over here in the U.S. just slapping us around, winning the Broken Arrow VK and 23K, and then also doing a Cirque Series race the weekend after that, uh, which was super cool. Definitely a heavy favorite going into this race with the season that he's having. Yeah, I would say a heavy, heavy favorite for sure. Um, next up, we have Kevin Cabet, also a Kenyan runner. Uh, he's from the Milamani Runners. He was third last year, and he was recently fourth at the Mont Blanc Marathon. Then we have Swiss man Remy Bonet from the Solomon team. Um It'll be really interesting to see how this goes for him. He did recently uh, run Rastanica Trail 50K to qualify for OCC. Um, not that that's like a terribly hard race for him. I don't know that it was like, you know, anybody was really pushing him. But historically, Sears and all has not been his best race. It would be cool for him to win this race as a Swiss runner. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. It'll just be interesting to see how the race goes for him, especially since it's hot. And also, will he come out of this unscathed for his OCC debut? That is a big question because to win the race this year is going to take something for sure. Yeah. And there's been a lot of runners who have been able to do the double, but I've yet to see somebody win Sears now and OCC in the same year. It's usually like, I think the best that I've seen is Blondine getting fourth at, at Sears now and then winning OCC in the same year. That's I also just think that that's way less likely to happen even now than it was like four years ago. Like this yeah, race. No, totally. Both races are so much deeper now that I think to win one, you really give up on the other. Yeah. Give up a lot of, a lot of emotional space at least. Yeah, I would say it's more emotional because I'm pretty sure Ruth Croft did something similar. She was um, like first or – did she get first or second that year? She got – well, that was 2020. In 2019, she was fourth at Sears and Al, and she won OCC. So similar to Blondine, actually. Yeah. But she ran 301, and last year – Oh, 301 would have gotten you third actually well it also is weather dependent i guess but yeah still, yeah i did sophia win it in like 250 last year 253 i just don't see first to third being that far apart anymore like i don't know this year just feels yeah even compared yeah. to last year like so true yeah we'll see <laughs> i'll see <laughs> back to the men <laughs> sorry guys 
Um, Sylvan Kachard is our next athlete on the list. He was fourth here last year. Let me double check this because I didn't have it written down for some reason. Third. Yes. Oh. He was oh, fourth Sylvan, last sorry. year. Yep. Um, and recently he was fourth at Monte du Nidiagi, which is one of the WMRA races that we have some other athletes from the podium also at Sears and all this year. Um, Roberto, Roberto De Lorenzi had the most phenomenal first six months of the year, I think probably of any athlete. Um, he was fifth here last year and was also the European up down champion this year and won a handful of Skyrunner races. The big question mark for Roberto is just like, has he recovered enough from the first half of the year to have a good second half of the year? Yeah. Yeah. I would say so too, but yeah, I mean, he had that 10 K too. Um, yeah. Earlier this year. So he is fast. Um, next up also from Brook trail runners who have been crushing it. We have Daniel Pattis. He was third at four sisters and recently was second at gear de Mont, which was a WMRA race. It's very, very mountainous and very technical, um, but Four Sisters was more runnable, so him getting third there was a really great performance. And then we have uh, Kennedy Dade, Kennedy, Kennedy? Uh, Prolong, who is also a Swiss runner, part of the ski club Val Ferret. He was fifth at the Vertical European Champs. Um, we have Robert Pickmoy who is also a Kenyan runner from the Joma Trail team. He was sixth at Mont Blanc this year and Zagama. He won Trans Grand Canaria, the marathon distance, as well as Ultra uh, was sixth at Ultra Pirineu uh, last year. No, he won Ultra Pirineu oh, this year. Oh, he won yeah. Ultra Pirineu. Oh, my god, Sixth gosh. at Sears and All in 2022. Last year. Yeah, he can do it all, man. That's really impressive. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least – at least as far as like top returners, because there's a couple more individuals we want to highlight. Uh, we have no other than Mr. Consistent himself, like under the dictionary, look up consistent. And this man's picture will be right there. And that <laughs> is Robbie Simpson, which is probably um, the most frustrating thing to him. Yeah, but it's so I mean, it's so impressive. Um, uh, and he represents Adidas Terex and he's been in this top 10 multiple multiple times he's been running this race for like almost a decade and has pretty much run the same time almost every single year yeah <laughs> right. oh man yeah no it'll be exciting and then a couple other names too oh wait i do have to highlight uh, he was second in 2021 <laughs> oh yes you know what robbie go get that first place yeah get <laughs> you've been running this race for too long you gotta go do it now <laughs> You shouldn't be listening to this preview. Um, so just another couple names to highlight. Two more run together on trail athletes um, who are seemingly very new to the trail space. Uh, Richard Omaya Atu Atuya and Josephat Kiprodich. Um, Richard was recently first at the Monte du Nid Diagui. I'm probably saying that wrong. And Gross Glockner WMRA races. And Richard was second behind him in both of those races. Um, Richard does not have an IAAF page, so we don't know how fast he is. But Richard Atuya has run 59.35 in the half marathon. And 59.41 this year. No, so, that was Yosefat. Or sorry, Yosefat has run 59.35 and 59.41 this year. Last year. Sorry, close. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. He's run, he, he ran 5935 February 2022 and then 5941 March 2023. Sorry. So you recent it. enough. Recent, yeah, enough, recent that enough that we still know that he is very fast. And yeah. And then the fifth of the Kenyan cross country championships this year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, I mean, 5935, that has to be the fastest half marathon that I've seen of someone coming to this race so far with that being said like richard has beaten yosef at two for two at the wmra races one of them being um i forget how to say it gross glockner or something gross, like gross that. Yeah. and then another one being i think montagne vertical or something like that so richard appears to be the stronger mountain runner but man yosef at gets going on that top part and just starts ripping it i mean it wouldn't surprise me if he's you know in that first place company yeah 
Um, and we have a handful of other Kenyan athletes on the list, uh, but they do not have any results, so we don't know much about them. Um, a little shout out to our USA athletes that are competing. Uh, we've got Christian Allen. Um, we're not sure about Mika. It seems like maybe he hurt his knee a little bit worse at um, Broken Arrow than he thought, but it did seem like he was maybe just not doing US champs and that he would maybe still be doing series and all, but we're not totally sure. Liam Mayro, Noah Williams, Nicholas Turco, Seth Ruling, Kieran Ney, Cole Hoff, and Matt Daniels taking it out for the U.S. I don't know that we've ever seen this many American men head over to Sears and all. You're on mute. Yeah, I don't think so. Not American men. Um, so I'm very excited to see. I am curious to see if Seth is actually going to race since he is lined up for CCC right now. Um, and then, yeah, it's definitely more than on the women's side because we just have well, not just. We have Sophia Lockley and Anna Gibson and Bailey, who are all uh, incredibly heavy hitters. Um, Ali Ostrander, Dar Danny Arevich, and then Alicia Shane, Samantha Lewis, Aaron Clark. So, yeah, I think there and are. I, and there's some men. of those. Like, I wonder if Aaron is running. Yeah, because she's, she's also doing CCC. Up. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's your list. Um, you can already tell this race is going to be super spicy. So let's get into some predictions, speculations. What the heck is going to happen this Saturday? Oh my gosh. We can't, we definitely can't start with podium picks. That's got to be like an end kind of thing because I feel like we got to talk about some other people first. Yeah. Just before we get started, uh, here's another message from one of our partners and then we'll get right into it. Right into it. Hey all. Danny here, professional trail runner and co-host of the Subhub podcast. Last year after getting sick before a big race, I started looking into natural ways to boost my immune system. So I embarked on a little research journey, trying out a few different options. And you know what? I found myself reaching for one set of products again and again, and that was Beekeepers Naturals. And guess what? They are now a partner of the pod. Founded with a mission to reinvent the medicine cabinet, Beekeepers Naturals offers an array of immune-boosting products free from harmful chemicals and artificial ingredients. So if you're looking for a natural option to boost your immune system, consider trying Beekeepers Naturals products. And be sure to use the code SUBHUB20 for 20% off of all of your orders at beekeepersnaturals.com. Now back to the episode. Welcome back. It's time. <laughs> to do it's predictions <laughs> yeah <laughs> prediction this time um so we have some fun different categories and like mk said we are going to keep our podium and winner picks to the end let's start with who we think is going to be kind of the debutante of this race this year rookie of the year um, so on the men's side, my guess is going to be Christian Allen. If he it kind of goes on the same trajectory that he's been going on, Christian Allen is our rookie of the year. I love that. I, I think Christian Allen is a great pick. Can he stick it to Yosef at Kip Rochich? I don't know. That's a great question. What is Christian's 10 KPR? He's wicked fast on the track too. And I know he ran his marathon at CIM, was it? Yes, that was his uh debut. And he ran to 11 if I remember correctly. I'm pulling up this World Athletics page right now. World Athletics changed their format and I'm really struggling with it. I'm not a fan. I know. I've seen it too. <laughs> yeah, I cannot figure this out. <laughs> Marathon All right, well, at 215. 215. Oh, oh, yes. He went out at 211 pace and had a glorious blow up all the way back to 215. Still qualifying for the Olympic trials, but definitely right. leaving a bit of his soul out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's coming back to me. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, I would say Christian Rios fat for my rookies of the year. Um, on the women's side, I'm going with Anna Gibson. Like her performance at Broken Arrow VK, um, I just think was really great considering she has mostly done track training. It seems like she's been spending some longer days in the mountains. And she's just the type of runner that I feel like this race is made for. Yeah. I need to double check that this is actually her debut at this course. Um, But my other submission for rookie of the year is going to be Nayara Irigoyen, just because she's been having a really good year so far. Um, she's been crushing golden trail, crushing, crushing sky runner. Um, and I could see her definitely doing really well in this course. Yeah. It doesn't look like Anna ran this last year. No, I think she was signed up as like, and that was part of a, her, uh, season, but then she got hurt. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So nice. Um, most likely to improve. Okay. Most likely to improve. Can you even call it improving on the (laughs) men's pick? Uh, Killian Jornet, can he improve in the sense that he wins a 10th time after finishing fourth place? Yeah. (laughs) Does that count when you're the goat? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I really don't know. Um, Probably not, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) Then maybe we go. But like Patrick too, like my brain is like, Patrick is a different runner coming into this year. Yeah. But does he blast 227, which was last year's time out of the water? Does he break Killian Jornet's record? Yeah. Which is 225.35? Um... Because that would be most improved. That would be most improved, yeah. If you go from getting second and running 228 to 225, yeah. I would say if you're taking off three minutes on this course, it's like it's like a marathon time, right? Like if you go from 240 to 237, that's a that's big, big deal. deal. Yeah. Just ask Think Robbie. how we should be treating it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's uh it's one of those races that like the same time gets you roughly the same place every year, kind of like a New York marathon or a Boston marathon, something like that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, somebody else I will know is uh Madalena Floria cuz she had a massive blow up last yes. year. I don't think and she blows up this year. No. Based on the rest of her season last year, like winning the Golden Trail final, um she she's not blown up this year like that was basically her first big trail race of the season she'd done worlds but i don't think it had gone as well as it had in thailand so yeah yeah. that's the one nice all right um best team performance it's um on the men's side it's gonna be a toss-up i think between brooks trail runners who dominated last year and team run together it depends on those two new rookies to Sears and all on the run together team because most of the Brooks trail runners have run and performed here on this course yeah I would agree with that and Solomon on the women's side I mean Sophia Lockley Yao Miao and uh, Madalena Floria those all three of them could be on the podium top five like it's really and uh the other um who are we saying before uh, oh, Caitlin Fielder Caitlin. is also on Caitlin there. Fielder. Nayara Irigoyen is a Solomon athlete. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, it's kind of like pretty broken up in terms of brands and on the women's side. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, all right. Two more. Do are there fan favorites? Like people that like athletes that people are rooting for incredibly. I mean, Killian Jornet for sure. Yeah, on the yeah. Men's side, based <laughs> on what we heard from Francesco Pubi about uh, Zagama and the way that those people, it was like nobody else mattered to them. No, no. It's, it was just Killian. And Killian's a legend here too. He's he's like, obviously Zagama's a little bit different because it's Spain and he's a Spanish man. But like, he's been running this race since 2009 and he's won it nine times. <laughs> yeah. He's a legend here and definitely a fan favorite, I'd say. Yeah, he probably definitely has... He definitely, that was weird. Probably definitely. He definitely has the most fandom 
I think Remy also will have a lot of fans because he's a Swiss athlete, um, especially if he's like up in the front after the climb and in the mix. Um, but yeah, I would say those two probably have the most fans here. And maybe I feel like Patrick's gained like a little bit of a, a fandom following as well. And then on the well, maybe women's it's just side, us. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just us. <laughs> I'm like, he's getting a huge following. On he's the women's so side, <laughs> I would definitely say Judith Wider. Uh, being yeah. a Swiss athlete as well again having that pride for the Swiss and I don't I don't know how maybe Sophia Lockley because she's the returning visitor but um, if yeah Maud's not there I would say Judith for sure yeah and I mean the Swiss people love this race the, the one of the coolest parts about the course that I meant to talk about earlier but didn't is when you get up to Hotel Weisshorn there are like so many people decked out in Swiss flags, Swiss like cow, what do you call them? Cow herder outfits. They've got cowbells. They're in your face. It's crazy. Um, it's not as big as like a Zagama, uh, you know, cheer section, but it is still like those people love this race. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's so cool. I love it so much. So just yeah, to see a local athlete obviously would be huge for them because huge. Other than Mod, they really haven't had a ton of local athletes winning this race. That's true. They actually haven't. Yeah. Yeah. It's been the main one. Um, okay. Before we get into podium picks and potential winner picks, last question. What do you think is most likely to happen? Like something you for sure think is gonna happen. Then I'd be giving away my winner on the oh, okay, side. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'll say something more strategic, speculative. Okay. Is I think the men's race is going to go out really hot and can potentially be knocking on the door of the course record. I really think the women's race is going to run similar to Mont Blanc Marathon. It's going to be like this weird sit and kick. Like yeah. no one's going to want to take the lead. I think that's a good, a good speculation of race. (laughs) Yeah. Like it's it's interesting because like Maude always won mostly on the climb. Yeah. And last year, Sophia wasn't first after the climb. And so, yeah, now seeing Mont Blanc Marathon where they all kind of just like were pushing each other, running with each other, but like trading, hanging out, but hanging out, you know, Uh, I think that's going to happen again. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. I'm excited yeah. to watch it. Yeah. Um, podium picks. Okay. Well, let's start with the men because I want to finish it off with the women, you know? Yeah. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Um, I'll go first. I did want to ask one more to podium winner is top American. Mm, okay. Okay. Oh. Top American man is Christian Allen. My guess um podium is going to be (laughs) oh this is gonna be a kind of a hot take oh am I dumb no okay sorry self-talk y'all self-talk all right I'm gonna put (laughs) I'm gonna put Remy in third I think I think it'll be close enough to where people think he might win but then uh, going to like hotel whatever i think the race might be close to decided like it was for the women's race last year i'm gonna go remy third here we go (laughs) killian second oh my gosh why did i do that and then patrick first oh my gosh fire me now (laughs) no dude i am i am on the patrick train like that is the thing that i'm most sure of for some reason (laughs) which is crazy because killian is a legend but i'm gonna go Roberto De Lorenzi in third, uh, Killian Jornet in second, and Patrick Kipniano in first. Dude, Roberto, our boy, comes through for third. I, I'm I'm feeling him right now. You okay. know, like he's having a good year. And then on on the U.S. side, yeah, I would say probably Christian Allen first. My second best guess for U.S. top men is Matt Daniels. Yeah, yeah. It's Unless gonna be one Mika of those runs. two. Unless Mika runs. Yes. Not sure about Mika, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, he's still listed on the wait, is he? 
Yeah, he's still yeah. listed on free trial. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. I feel like I so wow. Okay. Um, who bets against you killing tornadoes? Just the sub hub pod. Just apparently just credit everything. Don't that we've ever cancel said. us, please. <laughs> Patrick's <laughs> having a great year. Like, how do you yeah. bet against that kid? Yeah, I mean that VK at Broken Arrow, he looked like he was kind of chilling. Yeah. And he <laughs> swept everybody just yeah. wasn't even in first, like didn't go out hot. <laughs> What? oh my gosh all uh, right women's okay. podium i went first on the men so you go first for this damn okay top american too top american will be sophia lockley and i'm gonna go third place is gonna be madalena floria mm-hmm Nope, sorry. Third place is going to be Sophia Lockley. Yes. Second place is going to be Madalena Floria. First place is going to be Judith Wider. Yeah, okay. Top American, also Sophia Lockley. I do see Bailey getting into the top 10. when it, Or on a Gibson, actually. Um, Bailey will be right there. Um, and... I also, yeah, Madalena for third and Joyce for a double back second place. And, uh, well, you all know I have this thing where each of the <laughs> races have to have a different women's winner. And I really want to lean towards Judith, but for some reason, Sophia, Iger, Mont Blanc, fire burning, building inside gonna give our girl first yeah all right there you have it double it up yeah sick so make sure you guys head over to free trail fantasy after this it is going through top 10 for this race not just top five so load it up yeah i was gonna say do you want to throw a couple of names for the folks out there as we close this out for sure top 10s to consider like people you're feeling like i would bet money that they're gonna be in the top 10 um, on the women's side, I would I would put Joyce in the top ten. Probably Yao Meow, Alice Gaggy, Scout Adkin. This is her debut, but she's having a good year. Um, and honestly, Therese LaBeouf has not found herself outside the top ten of a race in a really long time. Yeah, I would say the same with those. I would also put Anna Gibson in the top ten. Yeah. Um, on the men's side, for me, I would definitely put Kevin Cabet in there somewhere um he's just very very consistent i would put robbie simpson and robert pickmoy uh in there too and i would strongly strongly consider richard atuya and yosefat kiprotich yeah yeah cool sick all right well hopefully you enjoyed that episode or this episode uh, again, don't forget to enter the Poseidon Bike Sub Hub podcast giveaway. That in- that giveaway starts today. All you have to do is like, follow, and comment, tag a friend. And our next two episodes will be the OCC previews, uh, women's preview with Tony McCann, men's preview with Hayden Hawks and the Sub Hub. So hope you enjoyed this podcast. And our August newsletter just came out a couple days ago. So if you haven't already been subscribed to it and you want to check it out, make sure you head over to our Instagram and subscribe to the Subhub Headlines. This has been the Subhub Podcast brought to you by Free Trail.